Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the FSX404 channel. Today we're going to do an approach into the second most extreme airport according to the History Channel, the Tonkantin Airport in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. From being surrounded on all sides by high mountains, to the crazy last turn onto the runway, this airport tests your skills all around. As far as the approach itself, we're going to do the RNAV, the North RNAV Runway 02 approach. That is that famous approach where you kind of go around sort of like in a toilet bowl, flushing yourself. Actually, that's what pilots call it in real life, the toilet bowl approach, because you're going around and around, like flushing yourself. This approach is going to be, we're going to split it actually into two parts. The first part is going to be the instrument approach. The instrument part is when we're going from the initial fix, Melvo, to the point TG017, or 17 as I call it, point 17, to point 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. The second part of the approach is going to be the visual part. Now the visual part is that last turn where we're actually turning, descending, holding our speed constant right onto the final for that short final and we're landing that plane. That last part is going to be done visually and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's talk about the instrument part of the approach first. Um, I have the approach plate here. It's the Tegucigalpa Honduras North RNAV Runway 2 approach. So if you're coming from the north, you would do this approach. If you're coming from the south, there's a different approach, but this is the one we want. Uh, obviously, for this approach, we're going to need the RNAV equipment inside the airplane. Now, when it comes to flight simulator, this approach is not a default approach in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is an add-on, and it can only be done in certain airplanes that have this approach. For example, I'm using the PMDG series airplanes. I'm going to actually use a 737-800, but I had to go and make this approach on my own and manually add it to the PMDG series. Don't ask me how I did it. It's been a while ago, but I do have the file for the PMDG airplanes the SID stars file that you can add on to your Microsoft Flight Simulator. That way this approach will be available to your PMDG plane. Now, I know Captain Sim, CLS, and a few others have this custom approach and you can go find it and get it somewhere online. But I don't have that approach for those airplanes. I only have it for PMDG airplanes. So if you want this file, send me a message with your email and I'll send you the file so you can add it onto your PMDG planes. Now let's get into the approach. Obviously this is the RNAV runway 2 approach. We already talked about the equipment we need. Now one thing we should note about this approach is that this approach is actually done in a mountainous area. Uh, what does this mean? What this means is that, that we have to be very careful with altitudes during this approach. In real life, we're actually allowed to go plus or minus 100 feet. In a simulator, believe it or not, in a simulator, it's harder to keep those altitudes. So in the simulator, you're allowed to go plus or minus 200 feet. Because this is a tough airport in a mountainous area, we're going to take those plus or minus 200 feet, so that 200 foot margin we have, and we're going to add 200 feet to our minimums. So for example, if we're at 8,000 feet, we will actually hold at 8,200 feet. If we're at 7,000 feet, we're going to hold at 7,200. You see, you get my point. Usually, approaches have IAFs, initial approach fixes. That's where the approach begins. This approach is a little bit different. This one has an IF, initial fix, and we're going to start our approach right there. Technically speaking, at Melville, we should be at 9,000 feet, but in this case, we're just going to be 8,000 feet or above. So starting at Point Melville, we're going to turn to a heading of 245. We're already going to be at 8,000 feet, and we're going to maintain 8,000 feet until we reach the point 17. As I said before, we're going to add 200 feet to the 8,000, so we'll actually be flying at 8,200 feet. At point 17, we're going to turn to a heading of 222 to fly to the point 15, and we're going to descend down from 8,000 feet down to 7,000 feet plus 200, so it's going to be 7,200 feet at point 15. At point 15, we're going to turn our plane to fly to point 14. At the same time, we're going to descend from 7,000 feet down to 6,776 feet. 6,780 feet plus 200 is about 7,000 feet. We're going to give ourselves that margin. Now, there's one thing to note at uh, point 14. Point 14 has the lower cross. What that means is that this point is a final approach fix. This is the point where we do our pre-landing checklist. And this is the point where we put our landing gear down. So at point 14, we're going to put our landing gear down. Now, here's something to note really quick. From point 15 to point 14, 
were only descending about 200 feet. The distance between the point 15 and point 14 is 3.5 miles. So we're descending about 200 feet in 3.5 miles. What this means is our descent is going to be very gentle at this area. We're going to be right under control from point 15 to point 14. After point 14, everything happens so fast and we're going to have to get a little bit more aggressive with it. But this part from 15 to 14, we're going to be very gentle with it. Once we reach the point 14, final approach fix, landing gear down, and we're going to descend from 6,776 feet, plus 200, 6,900, down to 6,236 feet, plus 200, so it's about 6,400 feet. Remember, we're giving ourselves that 200 foot margin every time. Now, point 14 to point 13, that's only 1.3 miles, so that's going to happen pretty fast. Our descent is going to start getting uh, steeper and steeper as we go. Once we reach the point 13, we're going to turn to point 12, and we're going to descend down from 6,236 feet to 5,599 feet, which is about 5,600 feet, plus 200 feet, so it's about 5,800 feet. Now, here's where the approach gets interesting, from point 12 to point 11. At point 12, we're at 5,600 feet, plus 200 feet, 5,800 feet. And we're going to do a step down descent to our minimum descent altitude, which is 4,144 feet, about 4,200 feet. Now, once we reach the point 11, and we are at 4,144 feet, and we don't have the runway, we don't have the runway lights in sight, we are doing a missed approach. From this point 11, this is where the approach gets really interesting. This is where the approach becomes visual. Now, in our most extreme series, we have had two other airports that we had to do these crazy turns right on to the final. The first one was Madeira. Uh, if you remember that approach, we kind of had to fly towards a mountain and then follow those lights that would lead us right on to the final. The second one that we did was Kai Tak. We did the same thing for Kai Tak. We got to a point, we picked up the lights, those rabbit lead-in lights, and then we followed those lights right on to the final. We're doing the same thing here for Tonkin Teen, except Tonkin Teen does not have rabbit lights. It does not have those lead-in lights that lead you right onto the runway. Not only that we don't have the lights to follow, but we have to nail the airspeed, we have to nail the altitude, because Tonkin Teen only has about a 6,000 foot runway. You don't have too much to play with. When we're coming out of that last turn, we're not going to be perfect. But if we're not in a position to immediately correct, immediately adjust, and be under control, then we have to pitch up, power up, get the flaps one notch up, get the landing gear, and we're doing a missed approach. For this last turn onto the runway, we are going to do something that student pilots have done from their very first day of training. We are going to fly by visual points. Now right here I have the, the view of the approach onto Tonkin Teen, uh, that last part. It's not really a satellite view, but it's close to it. I'm just, I just took a snapshot of it from 15,000 feet uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. By the way, this is Latin VFR scenery for uh, Tonkin Teen, and it is payware. And without it, without this scenery, you can't really do this approach properly. Now, first of all, this is where we're coming from, from point 12 to point 11. This is where point 11 is, visually speaking, on, on, on the map. So it's just before we hit this, this little populated area. Now, one thing to note is there's a road, there's going to be a road off to our left side. We're actually going to be following that road. Once this approach turns visual, remember that for most approaches, unless you're doing an ILS Cat 3 approach, for all other approaches, even if we're doing an instrument approach, there's going to be a point where our instrument approach goes to visual. Now, at Tonkin Teen, that point is point 11. That's also our missed approach point. So at this point, if we don't see the runway, we don't see the runway lights, and we don't see these, uh, these ground points, we should do a missed approach. So, the blue path is where we're coming from. And what's going to happen is, once we switch to visual, we're over the point 11, 4,200 feet. We're actually going to fly for the edge of this hill. Let me highlight the hill real quick. And we're going to get pretty close to the road, to that turn on the road. Now, just before we reach this turn on the road, we're going to start our own left turn and we're going to turn our airplane to another visual point. Now, this visual point I call the crossroads or the crossroad flower because it looks like a crossroad flower. So just before we hit the turn on the road, we're going to start our own turn and we're going to turn our airplane to that crossroad flower. 
From that crossroad flower, at that point, we should pick up the runway visually, and from that point, we should turn on to the runway visually. Now, this whole visual approach, we have to be very careful because our airspeed has to be on the spot, our turns have to be on the spot, and our descent has to be on the spot. If, as we're coming out of this crossroad of flowers onto the final, if we're too far off and we can't immediately correct for it, it's better to do a missed approach. There's a lot of airplanes that have gone off the runway end, actual airplanes because the pilots pushed it. Now also during this last part from the crossroad of flowers and our descent onto the, onto the runway, we're pretty much descending at 1500 feet a minute. The airplane systems are not going to like it, so we get warnings of pull up, pull up, terrain, too low. Now those are never good, but at Tonkin Teen, it happens not only in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it happens in real life. We just have to be careful. We have to be under control. This last part, we have to be so under control that if it's not there, pitch up, power up, flaps one notch up, landing gear up, and we're climbing, we're getting out of there. The very last part that we're gonna talk about for this approach is actually landing spots on this runway. This runway is very short. Now, 6,000 feet may seem like a lot, and 6,000 feet is quite enough for a wide open airport or for an airport that's at sea level. Tong Kong Teen is at 3,300 feet. We add a little bit of heat to that and our density altitude goes from 3,000 feet up to 5,000 and 6,000 feet. What that means is it's same as landing an airplane at 6,000 feet of altitude with a little bit of heat. That means our landing run is gonna be longer. That means we're gonna come in a little bit faster ground speed and we have to adjust for that. Now, let's talk about landing spots at Tonkin Teen. Obviously, everybody at Tonkin Teen, if we look at uh, another view of the runway, is aiming for those little white marks. As you can see, most pilots hit those white marks. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this up with uh, taxiway 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, in this case, we're coming from, uh, from our left to our right. 1 is green, 2 is yellow, 3, 4, 5 are red. To show you another graphic, real quick, this is what I've marked on the runway. So, in a green area, we're safe to land. In a yellow area, we're okay to land. And once you start getting into red, we shouldn't land. So, our kind of like last landing point is just at taxiway 2 here. Now, this is not taxiway 2, but I've named it taxiway 2. So, if we are not going to touch down by taxiway 2, a little bit beyond, just a little bit, it's better to pitch up, power up, go around, come again. So as we're doing our approach and we're doing our turn uh, to land, in the next video just coming up, we're going to aim to land before taxiway 2. If we're past taxiway 2, then we're going around, doing a missed approach, and coming back again. Now for this approach, I've chosen to do it in a PMDG Boeing 737-800. We are going to be coming from the north at about 8,000 feet, a little bit above, headed towards Point Melvo, and we're gonna pick up our flight there and go from there. So let's get ourselves in the airplane and let's fly this approach.